everybody please welcome Mr. Nicola Beatty. He's the Viking and Pedestrian Safety uh, Coordinator for the city. So let's give him a hand. My name is Jacoba Beatty. How you spell that? It's D E K O V A. And the last name is Beatty, B A T E Y. And today we're going to be learning bicycle pedestrian safety. Okay. So, can everyone see? Okay, so the things we're going to talk about today, we're going to go over the bicycle laws that we have in our state. We're going to talk about safety while riding your bicycle, communication, which is a very key factor with cycling, as well as bicycle maintenance, just a quick checkup every time you ride your bicycle. And lastly, where to ride your bicycle and where to park. Um, so to begin, we're going to go over the bicycle laws that are in Florida, what they are and how they pertain to you. Um, just to let you know, um, the Florida statutes contain our bicycle laws. Um, they're in the motor vehicle um, section, chapter 316. Um, so these are the bicycle regulations. And if you would go to the Florida Senate website, um, you would have this type of layout. So we're just going to go over the bicycle laws. And number one law that you need to know when we talk about bicycling in Florida is that the law says on roadways, bicycles are vehicles. They are actually um, considered the same as those are trucks or cars that are on the roadway. They're, they have the same rights and responsibilities as other vehicle operators. So um, here's a design, what we call Share the Road. The Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Board advises our commission and some of our local <coughs> transportation officials uh, develop this design. And you may see this around. Um, we haven't did any um, bicycle bumpers, um, car bumper stickers or t-shirts lately, but we may be doing this soon. And this is promoting that not only are roadways for automobiles, but they're also bicycles that are using the roadway as well as pedestrians. And you have other uses as well. You may have farm equipment or animals or what have you. But the roadway is something we need to share and all take responsibility in. So uh, we're just sharing information with you. So again, bicycles are vehicles. That's number one. So um, the important thing is when you're riding a bicycle, you need to follow certain laws. You need to know how to operate safely so you stay alive and that you also can um, you know, be in, in safety but also that you can uh, be legal. Um, if you don't follow the laws, you can't be cited for certain things. So we're gonna go over that. One of the number one, um, the number two um, regulation in the bicycle regulations is that you must have an attached seat while riding. And so most people would say, well, of course you would have a seat while riding a bicycle, but um, just realize that people make their bicycles, you know, especially young kids, they may um, throw a bicycle together, the seat may be damaged or what have you and they'll try to ride or what have you, but the law says you need a seat. And basically, when we're talking about these laws, put, it, put yourself in the mindset of automobiles as well. So if you were driving a car without a seat, that would be unsafe. Same thing with your bicycle. Now this is important because with our technology now, bicycles, um, bicycles are made for convenience as well as uh, transportation. They're, they're made as a transportation tool as well. So what they've done now, seats, will allow you to have a better fit comfort on your bicycle. So just like if you're in a car and you adjust your seat, you can do that same thing with your bicycle to give you a better fit or better control of your bicycle. And so now what they did, they've had devices, sorry about that, they've had devices, what they call quick release, where you can adjust the seat. And this will also allow you to remove the seat very easily by pulling the, the lever there. Now, um, before you may have to get tools and do some heavy manual labor, a little bit of labor to get that seat adjusted or to get that seat off. Well, now people can just readily go to your bicycle, take off your seat. So that's something you need to be aware of when you're parking your bicycle in public places for a long, experience, um, a long amount of time, the library or other places. A lot of people take their seats with them because they're a very valuable commodity. And especially if you're on the bicycle for a long time, you know, that seat comfort level is very important. So make sure you be aware that people can't take your seat. So you may want to take your seat if you're going to have your bicycle parked 
unsecured or um, people not being able to supervise them for a long amount of time. Um, another law says bikes can only carry the number of persons it's designed for. And the basic um, thought behind that is one person per seat. Now today, because you have all type of uh, bicycle um, products, such as pegs, people use this right here to do bicycle tricks and different things, but also people are using them to carry people. I don't know if you can see, but people stand on these pegs so that someone can carry them, but that is against the law. You're supposed to have one person per seat. So though you see people riding on handlebars and different places, the law says one person per seat. And think about it, even if you're in an automobile, if you have four seats, four seat belts, but you can fit six people in that vehicle, even though you can do it, is that safe? And so, um, it's illegal as well. And that's the thing you need to think about with cycling. You may be able to put a person on the handlebar or put them on the pegs, but is it safe, is it legal? And so one person per seat is the thought behind that. Now there are ways that people can ride more than one person per bicycle. Um, you do have different products, bicycle carriers for children, you have tandem bicycles, more than one bicycle built to uh, fuse together. You have bicycle hitches, you have all kind of carrier seats and um, different products that are produced to allow more than one person per bike. Um, so these are ways that you can legally ride one, more than one per bike. Um, the law further states that children who are under the age of four, under 40 pounds, um, need to have a, need to be in a child carrier seat, and it's one that's produced for that purpose. Um, children may not be, remain in that seat unsupervised. You have to be in immediate supervision of the child if they're in one of these seats. So that is a violation if you don't do that. Um, the law also says children under 16 must wear bicycle helmets. I think a couple of years ago, they got all the counties to um, kind of fold into this law that was couple of counties that were um, not um, in appliance or not in agreement with this law or not allowing it in their counties, but I think now all of our seven counties have this, this law. But under 16, you must wear a bicycle helmet that's properly fitted and fastened, and that has been approved by uh, ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, CPSC, the Consumer Product Safety Commission. So these are helmets that are approved and are safe. Um, you can be issued a citation, or you can be issued a brochure from crossing guard or law enforcement, or a citation from law enforcement if you do violate this law. Now, locally, you may not. It depends on the uh, the different law enforcement agencies what their focus focuses is. Um, I know I've done projects in other counties where you do have law enforcement that if you ride to school as a child and you don't have a helmet, they will cite you. You will get a ticket. So, um, or citation. So, you know, just realize this is a law that uh, can be enforced. Also, um, and sorry if y'all can't see this very well, but uh, another law under the bicycle regulations is that a bicycle rider may not attach to another vehicle while moving on the roadway. And again, this is a safety issue, and uh, you know, some people do this with rollerblades or what have you, but it is against the law. Um, also, cyclists who are not keeping up with the flow of roadway traffic um, must use a bicycle lane that's present or ride as close as possible that's safe and practical on the right-hand um, side of the curb or edge of roadway. So bicycles ride on the right, that is, um, with the flow of traffic. That is the law that bikes must ride on the right with the flow of traffic. Um, if there is a bike lane present, you must, you have a question? Yeah, so uh, they're riding a bike, no bike lane, uh, they're riding a bike in the right hand lane, in the middle of the lane. Yeah. Well, it depends on interpretation of whether. Okay. So his question is if you have no bicycle lane <laughs> and a cyclist is riding in the middle of the lane, okay, and it depends on if you're impeding or um, impeding the flow of traffic if you're not able to keep up with the speed of traffic. And depending on certain bicycles, they may be equipped to keep up with certain speeds. Um, on campus, 20 miles per hour, 
you know, that's easy, but in highways, yeah, in highways, if they're impeding or stopping the flow of traffic, um, and there is a bike lane present, you're, um, the way the law kind of reads, it's you, if you ride two abreast, you may not impede the flow of traffic. But the way we have, um, the way we have here, now they've made a, a law now where you have to be in the bike lane if it's present, so that you don't impede the flow of traffic unless you're overtaking someone, you're going around them, you're passing, um, you're preparing for a left-hand turn, or you're um, avoiding a danger, something in the roadway that you have to avoid. So um, basically, you're not allowed to impede or impact the flow of traffic. If so, you need to be to the right as safe as possible or in that bike lane. And a lot of this is up to interpretation of the law enforcement officer as far as you know, what they will cite. And then that's up you know, to the judges of what they will actually um, enforce at that level. Um, another law says cyclists on a one-way road with, um, with two, two lanes or more on traffic for one way, they ride as near to the left hand um, edge of road or curb as possible. So that's an opportunity for you to ride to the left when you are on a one-way road where there's multiple lanes. Um, bikes riding two abreast, as we were talking about earlier, side by side, may not impede the flow of traffic. So if you have traffic coming here and cyclists are traveling less than the average flow of traffic, um, the cyclists need to ride with a single file to allow traffic to go around when it's safe. They have to make sure they get three feet uh, clearance before they can pass, or they need to wait until they have that three feet. So everybody has a responsibility, everybody has, um, you know, safety to consider. And so, again, you get in a single file line to allow traffic to go around if you're not able to keep up with the flow of traffic. Or if there's a lane available for vehicles to go around, um, they may do so. And you may um, ride side by side if you're not impeding the flow of traffic. Again, that's up to interpretation. Um, bikes operating from sunset to sunrise must be equipped with a front, rear light, and reflector. Um, a white light in front, visible from 500 feet, and a red light in back, um, visible from 600 feet, as well as a reflector. Um, reflectors, as you may know, if, the, if you have um, vehicle lights shining, that sparkles on that reflector and bounces back <coughs> to the driver to let them know you're near. So uh, it's very important that you have lights and reflectors, white in front, red in back, no different than an automobile, white in the front, red in the back. And again, that's anytime it's dark from sunset to um, sun, from sunrise, uh, from sunset to sunrise. Also, there is a law that no parent or my, no parent, no parent of a minor may authorize or normally allow that child to um, violate the laws that we have here. So parents need to make sure their children wear helmets if they're under the age of 16, make sure they're riding on the right-hand side of the road, making sure they're following the law. They may not allow their child to uh, violate these laws that we have here. Also, when you're on a sidewalk, a bicycle is considered a pedestrian. So on the roadway, the law defines a bicycle as a vehicle. Same rights and responsibilities as cars and trucks and other operators. On the sidewalk, the law uh, defines the cyclist as a pedestrian. So they have the same rights and responsibilities as people who are walking on the sidewalk. And so the difference with that, um, in the roadway, you have stop signs, you have stop signals, which you must obey. On the sidewalk, just like a pedestrian, you don't have to, you know, stop. You know, if there's no stopping for the pedestrian, you can go. The um, issue is at intersections, crosswalks, what have you, as a pedestrian, you want to be careful operating as a bicycle at those intersections because a lot of cars expect sidewalks to have pedestrians, so they don't expect the cyclists to operate you know, as, you know, to move as fast, and they don't expect to have to respond as quickly to something on the sidewalk. So you need to be more defensive and cautious on the sidewalk. Yes? Perhaps I misunderstood that this was a
The only difference, if you're on the sidewalk, that categorizes you as a pedestrian. No, no, I'm talking about the, the crosswalk and the intersection. A crosswalk is a pedestrian facility, so there's still a pedestrian in that crosswalk. So, and that may be confusing to the driver if they're expecting you as a pedestrian to go at a pedestrian pace and you're riding a bicycle, you know, at a faster pace. And so that's why um, it's encouraged to walk your bicycle you know, through the crosswalk because people don't necessarily expect you to, you know, be moving it that fast when you're on a sidewalk. So it can be confusing, but a side a crosswalk is a pedestrian facility. Now, um, you can use, some cyclists will ride in the bike lane and they'll operate as a pedestrian at an intersection. You know, you have that right or you can change that. It's best to be consistent and predictable and not change up just so that you can, you know, be consistent in your behavior and that helps you get better flow of traffic. But if you're on the sidewalk, crosswalk, those are pedestrian facilities. Um, the roadway bike lane, those are vehicle <laughs> facilities. Um, so another law for cyclists, when you are a pedestrian on the sidewalk, you need to yield to pedestrians. The law says you have to yield to pedestrians and give an audible signal um, that you're coming. So let them know coming from behind, or use a bicycle bell. We have a bicycle bell ordinance that's been on the books for a while, not necessarily enforced, but um, it's encouraged. So um, we do have people who complain because they'll be in a wheelchair or crutches and someone comes up and startle them or kind of brush them to the side. And the law says a bicycle must yield the right to the pedestrian. So that is important and you give an audible signal before you get close to them so that you don't startle them. Um, no skates, posters, toy vehicles, or similar on the roadway except for a crossing in the crosswalk, which is a pedestrian facility. So when they say toy vehicles, some vehicles, because of their um, engine or motor or what have you, they don't have meet standards to be a vehicle or what have you. I think some ATV, certain, certain types of, um, certain type of devices aren't necessarily allowed on the roadway or sidewalk. You know, they have to be on a private um, location. But you're not allowed to have anything except a vehicle on the roadway unless you're using the crosswalk um, as far as something that's operating. Also, brakes are required on your bicycle. Just as you have car requirements, you have requirements for your bicycle. Um, you need to be able to stop within 25 feet from 10 miles per hour on dry level uh, pavement. Um, you don't have brakes. You know, you can't control your vehicle. You're breaking the law. And um, there's a lot of bicycles now that's made because of certain trends without brakes. And it's just important that you do have brakes that you can control your vehicle uh, just because things come that you don't plan. You have crashes, you don't plan them, they just happen. Um, retailers shall not sell bicycles unless they have identifying number that are permanently stamped or cast on the frame. So you need to have some type of serial number to um, indicate your And that, that reminds me of something. I've seen people that have a little tag, it's almost like a car tag, on their seat, on their bikes. And um, like a license plate type like of? Plate. There may be different type of decal systems. Um, Sometimes there are other type of tags. Actually, we have some today bicycle tags that you can put on. But there are decals and etchings where you have a serial number that's you know specific for that bicycle. And the University of Florida does it as well as Gainesville Police Department. They have a um, not a decal system, but you can go online on the Gainesville Police Department website, enter in your bicycle information so that they can store your serial number. So. Um, but these, that's not required. Um, not at this time. These are just programs where you can use it in case. And what they use it for, especially at UF, is if someone takes, or GP, if someone takes it to steal your bicycle, take it to a pawn shop, they'll be able to check that and, you know, try to stop that um, transaction. And that does happen quite often. So it's very important that you register your devices. Um, if you're not affiliated with UF, go to the Gainesville Police website 
on the main page and right there at bicycle registration, go and put your information in so that you can have that um, in case someone steals your bicycle and tries to take it to a bike shop. Or it can be tracked. Um, the law also says no one may rent or lease a bicycle to someone under the age of 16 unless the child possesses a bicycle helmet or the person renting or leasing provides a bicycle helmet. <coughs> Also, failure for a, of a, a person to wear a bicycle helmet or failure of a parent or guardian to prevent a child from riding a bicycle without um, a helmet may not be considered evidence of negligence or contributory negligence. Um, except where otherwise provided, a violation of um, this section is a non-criminal traffic infraction, infraction punishable as a pedestrian violation, uh, such as in Chapter 318 of the Statutes. Law enforcement may issue a traffic citation for uh, subsection 3 or 15 only if it occurs on a bike path or road, um, not on a private property, not on private property unless it's um, for public purposes of vehicle traffic. So there are certain standards where you can use it. Um, and so this is um, just encouragement, no <coughs> headphones iPods while you're riding your bicycle. I think they allow for one earbud, but um, just as when you're driving an automobile, you, know, you don't want to limit your hearing because that is a very important part of um, being safe and operating your bicycle the right way. So now I just have a little quick session on safety while riding your bicycle, um, how to keep yourself safe. One thing is you want to make sure if you're driving an automobile or a vehicle, you want to make sure you allow three feet if you're doing any passing of a bicycle. If it's not, if you're not able to give three feet, you want to wait until it's safe to do so. And for most lanes, it's about half a lane space or so. Um, for cyclists, you want to make sure you ride in a straight line, be predictable. You don't want to be wavering or weaving or being inconsistent with your travel. Be consistent with the roadway path because Again, that will allow others, when they're driving, they're taking cues from what you're doing. If you're slowing down, if you're speeding up, if you're turning, that's a cue to other drivers, just as if you were in another vehicle. So make sure that you're consistent on your bicycle. Make sure you ride on the right-hand side of the road. Um, and again, be predictable. Um, also, be very careful when you're riding um, at intersections, at turns also. Um, riding up right behind a vehicle sometimes to put you in a blind spot so that this person may not be able to see you right here out of their window. You may not be able to pay attention to the blinker if they don't have one on their mirror. And if they're making a right hand turn and you don't realize it and you're right behind them, you could have a conflict. So you want to be very careful when you're riding a bicycle. Uh, vehicles that are getting ready to turn or what have you, make sure you kind of fall back a little bit so they can see you out of their rearview mirror, or if you have time, make sure you go up in front of them so you're placed in a place that's more visible for your safety. Also, we talked about sidewalks as well. Sidewalks are for locations where sometimes you may be more invisible than you think for the traveling vehicular traffic in the roadway. On the roadway, a lot of the vehicles are really concerned with trying to get in and out of their lanes, they're trying to be concerned with turning, and they're looking at conflicts that are on the roadway. So a lot of times, they may not pay attention to what's on the sidewalk, especially if it's coming faster than what they usually expect a pedestrian to, to operate. So when they're coming out, instead of them paying attention to the person who's probably closest to them, their focus is, do they have a gap where they can get in traffic? They may pay attention more to the person in the roadway or bike lane before they pay attention to the person on the sidewalk, which is, you know, very unfortunate. Especially if you have shrubbery or different um, things that impact the view or your vision triangle. And so, again, when that vehicle's coming out, if you're on the sidewalk and you're riding a bicycle, be very careful at intersections, driveways, alleys, because those are places where people, um, most of the time, do not look for you or their obstruction that allow you to be kind of hidden, unfortunately. So be very careful on sidewalks, and you may have to slow down at intersections and driveways because those are huge conflict areas. Um, 
I meant to bring some papers for this exercise here. Basically what this was, have a piece of paper in front of you, it has a cyclist on one side and not on the other. And if you were to um, cover your right eye, they told us they have a they have a seat paper. Oh okay. Actually I had a, um, this diagram right here on that paper. But you can try you can still try it when you get home. You can put a square and then a dot right next to each other just like that. And if you hold that if you cover your right eye and you hold the paper up to your eye level, arms length away, about the time you get halfway here, if you're focusing only on that dot, the square on the left hand side kind of disappears. It's a blind spot. And it's just to show you even though some people see you, they may not see you. And adding to that, people distracted, they're using a cell phone, they're addressing issues. So a lot of times, you're putting yourself in a lot of risk if you assume that people see you. You have to communicate. You have to make sure that you not only communicate, but make sure you uh, address them in case they're distracted. And so here, as you see, it's kind of really hard to see or make out anything. A lot of times, this is how we, how we uh, get around in our community, walking or biking. Whether you're going to a shopping center or something, or going to work, or going to school, in your neighborhood, this could be your area of, of walking, and you're competing with no light, no visibility. So it's very important that you wear bright colors, use safety vests, retro-reflective material. Um, these are available at Lowe's Home Depot for about $10, but if you go to Family Dollar, Dollar General, they have shirts and different materials that are like $3 that have high visibility to help keep you safe. So as you see, it's hard to see at night if you don't have lights, but you have safety vests and reflective material, it helps stand out. Very important, be seen. <coughs> Even if you're walking, use flashlights, blinking lights or bright colors, you don't want to wear dark colors, you want to wear bright colors because it makes you invisible when it's dark and you're wearing dark colors and you have no lights. Make sure you have lights and reflectors. Um, communication, when you're on your bicycle, you have to communicate. You need to definitely talk to other people who are driving, other people who are walking, so that you can be aware of what they're doing, but they can be aware of you as well. So make sure you make eye contact. Don't assume they see you. If they have tenant windows and you can't see through that tenant window, allow them to go ahead. Make sure you wave your hand or do something because they may be looking at you but be distracted still because they're listening to a radio or they're, they're on a phone call that um, may not be on the phone but maybe they're doing speakerphone. And they may look as if they see you but they don't. So be very, very aware that you have to sometimes break their attention. Um, use hand signals. So if you're riding your bicycle, if you're turning to the left, they made it simple, just point to the left with your left hand. Keep your right hand on your handlebar, and your left hand, you extend it to the left. If you're making a right hand turn, you extend it to the right. Now, some people know the traditional way of a right hand signal, which is just to extend your hand up. And so this is still a valid way to indicate a right hand turn, because if you're in an automobile and you're blinking for out, you still have to do this. So again, left hand turn, you point to the left, right hand, turn, you point to the right. And so if you're doing this, make sure you make eye contact before you act on those terms. I yes. have a question, a question about the safety here. Okay. This, uh, this came to my mind because the motorcycle riders, some with common sense. Why aren't uh, cyclists required to wear glasses so if bugs get in their eyes or something, they won't, you know, have an accident or something like that? I guess it, a lot of some kind of goggles or something you're riding along, you know, like you said, something flies up and hits you or, you know. A lot of the laws sometimes, you know, lobbyists or different ones who, pro you know, promote that. Or um, a lot of people are working against laws or adding more laws to safety because they say it's just, you know, your right to ride how you want. Cyclists may not be riding as fast as motorcyclists, so you don't have as much of the impact, you know, as a motorcyclist who, you know, have a greater velocity meeting that bug or what have you. But um, as a lot of times as you know experience goes and you have issues, people will adapt to what you know works. So if they need to, 
you know, that's something that they will, you know, make sure they address. Yes. Okay, so the middle picture is our stop signal. And basically they're putting their hand down to the ground. And I call this the kickstand sign. If your body is a bicycle and you were um, using your kickstand, and your kickstand is on the left-hand side of your bicycle, and you point to the ground, when your kickstand is down, your bicycle is stopping. So basically this is a kickstand or a stop sign. And basically it's an about to stop sign because you want to signal this before you get to the stop sign to let them know I will be stopping. So when you're riding, you want to first signal that you're stopping by doing your kickstand sign, hand down on the left side. And you don't want to put it close to the body because they may not see it. You want to make sure you extend it out. Some people may not be able to make that angle, so if you're not, you can point to the ground. You may want to wiggle your fingers when you signal. But you want to definitely make eye contact, make sure you're aware of what's going on. So again, before you get to the stop sign, do your stop signal. If you're turning left, right, make sure you make eye contact. So if you have a left turn, a right turn, and then this is a stop or slow down signal, pointing to the ground with your left hand. OK, so just a little ABC of bike maintenance. Check your air. Um, if you have low air, look on the side of the tire. It'll tell you how much pressure to put in that tire. If you're riding your bicycle on low air, just as an automobile, you have some disadvantages. Um, you aren't able to ride as fast with low air. It can affect your steering. You can um, damage your wheel. And it causes more energy, more work to pedal that bicycle when you have low air. So there's an incentive for making sure you have good air in your tires. Um, just as you waste gas if you're or you utilize more gas if you're an automobile. Brakes, you wanna make sure you have the brakes as we said before, they're laws and standards, 25, um, the 25 feet you wanna stop uh, at 10 miles per hour on dry, level pavement. You don't have brakes, you're breaking the law, you can crash, you can't stop, um, and you don't control your vehicle properly. So just make sure you have, you always check your brakes, make sure that's working. And when you use your brakes, if you have, your handlebar brakes, you want to make sure you're applying them evenly. If you only apply your front brakes, you tend to, your bicycle tends to flip you over. So when you're applying your brakes, your handlebar brakes, you want to make sure you, or any brakes, kind of lean back to distribute your weight so that you don't have a tendency to flip over. Um, and then you want to make sure you check your chain, make sure it's free of debris, uh, make sure it's cleaned off well oiled and lubricated. Um, also your crank where your pedal area is, make sure that's not loose. If so, the pedal area can fall off your bicycle. I've had to have to use go. So make sure that you um, are just checking to make sure things aren't loose and shaky. They need to be in, in good, uh, good and solid, a good fit. So check your crank and your chain so that you can keep pedaling and moving your bicycle. Your crank falls out, you don't have pedals to move your bike, your chain fall, falls off or breaks, um, you don't have a mechanism to also maneuver your bicycle. Um, where to park and ride your bicycle? Uh, make sure you pay attention to signs. Um, they are definitely important and you can be impacted by these signs. Um, one of the things is each city may have their own indication of whether you can ride on the sidewalk. That's up to the municipality. Here in Gainesville area, we can ride bicycles on the sidewalk in public areas. Some cities will not allow it, so you have to know what that particular municipality allows. Private property, a lot of times, do not allow it. So you go to Walmart, you go to Publix, they'll indicate no bicycles on sidewalk. Um, liability issues for their business. So um, just know the different area you're, walk you're in. Um, when there is no sidewalk available, if you're walking, you want to walk on the left-hand side of the road. If you're biking, again, always bike on the right-hand side of the roadway. And um, a lot of people were taught different, especially bikes, cycling. They were taught to face track. Yes, you have a question about that. Right on the right. Now, if there's a one-way street and you have more than um, two lanes, and it's one way you can ride on the left, but you always ride on the right. Basically, you're doing the same thing as any other vehicle would be doing on the roadway. 
So if you're in a different country, of course, things are different. But here in the U.S., you're going to ride on the right-hand side of the road always. If you're walking, face traffic. And it's easier for the uh, other vehicles to estimate and to ride with the flow as a cyclist if you're riding on the right-hand side of the road. If you're walking, you're going a lot slower. But if you're riding your bicycle, you're going you know, faster than average. And just like an automobile, if you're riding behind that automobile, you can tell if they're slowing, if they're you know, going faster, kind of by you know, how you all pass the same object, the time spacing between that. And you also can tell if they're weaving or if they're doing certain things. If you go in the same direction, it allows you that opportunity to interpret. But if you're going different directions, it's a little harder. So it's best if um, vehicles are traveling in the same direction so that they can operate in unison. So where to park your bicycle? Make sure you do not park your bicycle um, blocking the road, the uh, sidewalk. You want to make sure there's access for um, people who may be in wheelchairs, children who may not need to or be able to safely go out into the roadway. So make sure you do not block access with your bicycle. And if there are signs that say no parking, make sure you obey that because you can't be impacted by those signs. So be careful parking your bicycles near places where people are trying to access. Um, where to ride? You want to ride, um, there's different opportunities for where to ride. Some people prefer on the roadway, some people prefer um, on trails, off-roadway. Um, here in Gainesville, we're just introducing bike boulevards, and these are areas that will have bicycle signage, um, indication on the roadway markings to let you know that this is a roadway that has lower traffic volume and um, accommodation for um, cyclists, and it actually allows more of um, encouragement for cyclists to use that facility. Also, you may have um, detection, video detection for cyclists to allow those traffic um, signals to change, as well as bike boxes. Um, if you, North and West 12th is our current bike boulevard, and so this is an alternative to 13th Street. So starting up near 19, across from Gainesville High School, on 12th, just east of 13th Street, going south all the way down um, near Depot, near P.K. Young, this is a roadway that has more um, encouragement for cycling. So again, you'll see these markings, you'll see signage, you'll see roadway markings, um, you'll see video detections and other type of um, things to encourage people to use the um, roadway. Because 441 or 13th Street, there's a lack of right of way in certain areas to put bike lanes. So there are bike lanes in certain areas, but for majority of the park, there is no uh, bike lanes, a lot of heavy truck traffic. So this is a good alternative. Um, so bike boxes, which you'll find one on uh, northeast, not northeast, I'm sorry, southwest um, 2nd Avenue on 13th, at 13th Street. So it's just a block south of University and 13th, where that intersection is just south of there, the entrance of the University of Florida. Right across from there, there's a bike box. And this basically allows cyclists to gather in front of the automobiles to give the cyclists priority once the light has changed and, and to, um, to green. <coughs> um, so at this type of um, treatment, you don't want cyclists to gather near or behind the cars. You want them to be up prominent so they can be seen. It's a way to be more safe and seen for the cyclists. So it's not for the cars to take that green space, it's for the cyclists together. Um, also, we have roundabouts in our community. Um, just to let you know, when riding a bicycle, you can choose to ride on the sidewalk through the roundabout. And when you ride on the sidewalk in the roundabout, you do have a section where you cross not in the traffic. As a pedestrian, you cross away from the traffic, and you're only crossing one lane of traffic at a time and you usually have a pedestrian refuge in the middle of each, after crossing each lane. So it lessens the conflict that you have in crossing. So if you're riding on the sidewalk, instead of mixing in with traffic, you just cross one lane of traffic at a time, pedestrian refuge, cross the other lane of traffic, and then you keep crossing until you reach your destination. 
Um, if you ride in the roadway as a cyclist, um, usually if there's a bike lane leading up to that roundabout, it will um, allow you to either continue as a pedestrian or allow you to stay in the roadway. And when you're a cyclist in a roundabout, you actually take the lane. Um, roundabouts are treatments where the traffic is supposed to be slow, and so you can, instead of stopping, you yield, and you stop if necessary, and you yield to those who are already in the roundabout. Now, most people say, why do we have a roundabout? It's confusing. It is a learning curve. We have to do a lot of education outreach, but what happens when you have the traditional T intersection, the regular intersections, there's many different, about about 16 at least different type of opportunities for crashes because of the different angles that you're maneuvering in a regular T intersection. Those um, opportunities are cut in half in a roundabout because everybody's going the same direction. Traffic is supposed to be slower and that depends on the design of the roundabout, whether they have different curving to prevent people from being able to just ride through. So in a um, Roundabout people are supposed to slow down, not just be able to zoom through. They should have to, it's maneuvered where they have to actually slow down and go around safely. So um, you can stay in the lane, you would take the lane, and in the bike, in the roundabout, you would be in the middle of the lane as a cyclist. And you don't have to use your blinkers because everybody's going, blinkers, everybody's going the same direction, and you just make your exit whenever you need to. Um, I think there is a discussion now for a two-lane roundabout coming up. So we'll see about that. Lastly, where to park your bicycle. When you park your bicycle, make sure you do not lock your bicycle up by the tire. Um, and the reason why, it's kind of the same because of the seat. You have a lot of quick-release tires now where people can, you have a lever that you can pull up and it's a way to easily change your tire if you need to. People can remove your tire and then they'll have your bicycle and the back tire, and all they have to do is get a front tire, and they'll have their mode of transportation. So instead of locking your bicycle up by the front tire, you want to make sure if you have a quick release tire, remove it and line it up with the back tire. And you want to lock up the both tires and the bicycle frame itself. Um, the U lock is suggested as a good lock to use. Uh, people are using all kind of materials now to cut bicycle chains and different type of locks, but this is suggested as a good bicycle lock to use, and you want to make sure, again, you're locking the frame of the bicycle, and if possible, also the tires together. And so that is our bicycle safety um, presentation.